We got the one Mexican kid over here. I don't even know where he came from. The border? This one. This one's even worse. Why do you look like the bum that stole all the other bums' food? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's all you have to do to get ready? <laughs> Nico, what's breakfast at, dog? We said cereal. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> you nigga have conflé. <laughs> Is that how y'all say it? Conflé? 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 Con fle con leche. Good afternoon, guys. It's been a very long week. I'm like sweating right now. I hope everyone had a good, was it Memorial Day or Veterans Day? I'm, my mind is so mixed up. Sorry if I'm getting those two wrong. It was very, very hectic for me. Um, I guess just to kind of recap real quick, what I ended up doing was I ended up making a jersey. The jersey was going to a very special person and his name is DJ Clark Kent. He's the DJ out of New York. He's been holding it down for a very long time, and um, I'm just really good. I'm, I guess I'm really glad at the way that the jersey came out. Right after that, I jumped into making a jersey for either him or one of his people, but Allen Iverson or one of his crew members, and uh, they sent me, I think it was like one of his high school jerseys or college jerseys, but as long, honestly, as long as AI sees my work in person, that's all I can really ask for. I got two boxes right here. I don't even know what's in them, but I'm expecting one of them to be a snapback, but I think it is a 1997 Bulls um, finals hat, which the customer, if you're watching this, thank you so much for copping that from me. And I know you've been waiting a long time to get this. I'm going to literally do an unboxing right now to see if this is it. And I'm going to work on it tonight, have it shipped out for tomorrow. My apologies, but first, first of all, let's see what's in the damn box. But let's see what is inside this one. Oh, 1998 Chicago Bulls NBA Finals joint. This is going to be so sick. It's going with the black python right here. And just to match it, it's actually going to go with the red lambskin bottom underneath. So it's going to look just like that. Let me see if you can see it. Boom. Just like that. So I'm going to end up cutting up this and making it and seeing what's how that goes. Oh, my God. Guys. Blanks. Those blank hats literally cost me so much headache. You guys have no idea. What ended up happening was um, a customer out of the UK has been contacting me back and forth about wanting to make some hats. Uh, long story short, he came to America. He says, I'm only here for a couple of, a couple of days. Can you make these hats and, sit and ship them out to me? So I said, okay, I'm not working with a lot of time. I think I can get it done. So what ended up happening was I ended up picking up the blank hats that he wanted because he's going to put his logo on them after I'm done with them. But the guy that I ordered the blank hats from ended up saying, hey, uh, we're not going to be able to get it to you in the time that you need it by. So I'm already like, oh God, like I can't, like I, I, I try to treat every customer like they're my last. So I really want to keep my end of the word, even though I cut my time really, really short. So I said, okay, like please do what you can. So, um, you know, once they ship out, it's, it's, it's either FedEx or USPS service that they, you know, I don't know what they could possibly do to lose a package or to delay it, but anything that could possibly happen that was bad happened. And, and, that, and that was that. But uh, what ended up happening was I had to go around the mall, search for, you know, all, all the kiosks that sell hats, uh, lids, hat shack, all that crazy stuff, see if they had blank hats. Luckily, I found one that had it, but instead of paying 5 or $6 per hat, I was ended up paying like $20 per hat. So you can obviously see how that kind of ruined my day just a little bit. But luckily, I got it done. He got his hats. I'm still waiting to hear from him as far as feedback goes, but hopefully he liked them. I mean, this place looks a lot better than what it did before. Still not perfect. I still didn't hit the floor with a vacuum. But I'm going to save that for later because if you can see outside, it's not getting any brighter out. And whenever I film, I like to film with good lighting. 
So what I'm going to do is work on this hat right here and basically kind of chat with you guys and, you know, let you guys in on some new things that are coming up. And I don't know. We'll see. Good morning, guys. I can't tell if you can tell that I just woke up. It's really early for me. It's like 9 a.m. But um, I ended up finishing, finishing up that hat yesterday and I had some commentary going on. But uh, I decided to kind of cut it short because even though what I was talking about, I thought was kind of cool and kind of um, insightful, maybe something you guys wanted to know, which is the fact that I was talking for like 30 minutes and the camera was just pointing on me. It just, it just wasn't fun for you guys to sit there for 30 minutes. So what I'm going to try to do is say the same things I was saying, but kind of just talk about it throughout my day. But uh, I just figured I'd show you guys what the hat looks like right now and some other things I was working on last night. So, this here, let's see if this focus real quick. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Let me see if I can take it out of its cover. You can see, he wanted the black python skin on the top, and red Italian lamb skin at the bottom boom and of course the strap and um, every time you buy a headquarters hat for me that's a python skin or anything with like a leather on it I always add my pin on there and okay camera just you know try not to focus then okay you're doing a great job at that so yeah this is gonna go out today <clears throat> another thing I was working on last night was this right here um I always get weird calls throughout the night, uh, a lot of them being clients and stuff like that, asking about hat orders and stuff, but one of them happened to stop by yesterday. This hat didn't come like this, it has like a like a suede brim on, obviously it's a dad hat style, and <laughs> I thought it was pretty clever because it had the PlayStation logo, but it's this pretty boy, and the dude who actually had it made really is a pretty boy, so... Um, anyway, he brought me like this, uh, this faux le this faux suede material that he wanted to switch out from another brim. And so I basically did like a brim swap or, you know, like a quick custom and, uh, came with like a, a regular strap, but I kind of hooked it up with one of my custom straps. I just want to kind of talk about something that I was talking about yesterday, something that was supposed to be in the vlog that I had just cut out. And um, it was a mistake that I made when I first started. And I think this tip that I'm going to tell people that are thinking about starting their own kind of business or, or maybe already started their business and are dreaming about quitting their nine to five job to pursue their business. What ended up happening was I started the business, I still had a 9 to 5 job, I was working at uh, Macaroni Grill at the time, which was a, like an Italian restaurant. And um, to make a long story short, I was working, I was consistently putting out content on, on, uh, on Instagram. And I got a phone call one day, and I was at work, but I picked up the phone, and it was some guy, he said, dude, I want to work with you things are going to change. And I was like, okay, because you, like, you know how it is, like, when you have your own thing going on, uh, people call you, but like maybe like one time out of 20 calls, it either results in like a sale or a dope ass opportunity. But uh, this turned out to be a dope ass opportunity. So this guy ended up supplying me with enough business for me to get comfortable with the fact that maybe I was onto something. Uh, about a couple months later, I want to say almost a year, I got another phone call. This time I was sitting at home. And the call was from Miami, so I didn't pick up the phone because I thought it was my pops and I was binge watching something on Netflix and I was like, okay, I'm not worrying about that. He called him right back. So I picked up, hi, and it was like, hey, my name is so-and-so. And I was like, oh, oh, I'm sorry for not picking up the first time. And uh, he said things are going to change. So again, one out of 20 calls, this was that call. And uh, what ended up happening was he ended up, me, he ended up supplying me with a with enough business from that one prospect alone that I was able to quit my job. Now, there comes a defining moment when an entrepreneur finally realizes that he can quit his job. And that defining moment is very pivotal. It's scary and exciting at the same time. 
And when I got that that inclination that I was gonna finally quit my job, what ended up happening was, um, I remember the exact place I was at. I was at a shooting range with a buddy of mine. I was having a lot of fun. And I said, and my, my boss called me and says, hey, we're gonna make sure that you're coming in today because it's close to five and you're not here yet. And I'm like, to be honest, I'm not, I'm having a lot of fun doing what I'm doing right now. I'm not coming in. And when I said those words, it was two feelings. It was anxiety and relinquishment. I was so nervous that I did the only thing you, you can possibly do is I drowned out my emotions like a girl. I went shopping. I, I, I picked up a, a nice leather jacket and some nice shoes and stuff like that just to kind of get my mind off of the fact that, oh my God, shit just got real. I really just did quit my job. But here's the kicker. <clears throat> I would have went about it in a different way. Let me explain. When you own a business and it is supporting you, it's not just supporting you, you have to make enough income to not only support and grow your business, but also to support and like grow yourself. So what ended up happening was, as soon as I was, I was able to supplement the income I was making from work, I went ahead and quit my job because I was so thirsty to get away from the whole nine to five rat race that I was willing to do whatever it took to get out of it. What I should have done, had I known what I know now back then, was waited just a little bit longer to the point where I was able to save up almost like a, like a financial space cushion, excuse me, just in case something did happen, I would, I would have, you know, like a little reserve, you know, just for emergencies and stuff like that. Could I, could I have quit my job, have a space cushion and been good? Yes. However, what happened with me is what happens to a lot of athletes. What they end up doing is they end up getting a, a decent amount of money and sometimes it's consecutive and you think it's going to last forever. So what do you do? You go out and spend it. You go out and blow it on everything. For me, it was buying new toys and it was going on trips and it was just going out to eat. Those three things, the one thing I wouldn't take back is the trips because that's where a lot of my memories were made. But all the toys that I was buying, they're probably gone now. All the restaurants that I ate at, it's not like I was eating at like super fancy restaurants. It was just, just I didn't feel like cooking, I'm going out. For years, I was making a sizable, comfortable income and I thought it would last that way forever. I got complacent in my business. And what I noticed is that my earnings plummeted. Now my earning potential is infinite. However, I what I what I really what I really noticed is that I need to get back. I needed to get back to my roots. And by that, I had a a very hungry work ethic when I first started. That's what got me to a place where I was able to to quit my job. But what I noticed is that through that complacency, I got lazy. I stopped innovating and I stopped thinking of new and creative ideas. However, I'm back on track now. The reason why I'm telling you guys this is because I know there's a lot of uh, like customizers out there, whether it be sneakers, clothing, anything, that are kind of questioning themselves whether they should be focusing on their on their job their, or starting up their own business and, and, and putting all the effort into that. And I wish I knew what I knew now back then and I, maybe I would have made a couple different decisions but I'm telling you guys this through a sense of transparency and um, you know this is this is me growing and you watching me grow and, and this is us growing together if you guys have any questions as far as a transition from where I was at to where I'm at now to where I'm going to be just ask away I have no problem telling you guys I have no problem divulging what people will consider like confidential things you know what i'm saying if it has to do with the business then maybe i might keep that reserved but when it comes to me personally i'm an open book so guys any questions put them down in the comments below if you don't want to kind of be public with that just you know shoot me an email you know no matter what it is if you want to even if you want to say what's up i'm there what i think i'm going to do right now is i'm going to cut this video right here i hope you got a little tidbit of information from me i hope you guys right now kind of understand me a little bit more and again if you have any questions i'm an open book for whoever wants to ask anything and you guys can also follow me on social media my personal one is moses underscore vega uh the business one is hq clothiers h q c l o t h i e r s and um you know hopefully i see you guys there and i will see you guys in the next one